another episode of What is the Premise? Oh, I mean, we got people looking at you now. They weren't looking at you when you did that, but you could still welcome them. Oh, okay. Well, you could look at me now if you wish. Well, that's because the camera is showing you. Okay. See, this is the problem. Sometimes the camera guy is on you. Sometimes the camera guy is on me. And we're still working with that. We love that you hang with us, even despite bad technology. But we love that you're here because we got some things to say. And we know that you are watching, not because we're pretty faces, but because Paul's so knowledgeable. Uh, and, and Paul's we, so knowledgeable. We, we, we know, know that's why they're we, there. We know that you know that it's not the technology's it's, fault. It's, it's not. It's operator error. It's, it's, it's oh, okay. We it's going it. to be good today. Because today, this is what we're talking about. Why would you listen to somebody else? <laughs> Particularly a pastor. That's kind of, Exactly. Why the, would you listen to a pastor? Like if you were going through something big in your life, maybe you would seek out somebody for some... Advice. Oh, that's it. Today is, is what is what, the premise of right. advice. What is the premise of advice? Oh, we could say that about three more times because this might take your mind a little bit. Well, might take my mind a little bit to get around that. You know, that, that I'm going to ask for advice. I'm going to actually like listen to somebody else and that they might say what, uh, you know, I should do versus, you know, well, I just, you know, turn into my joy and, you know, what's in my heart. You're going to follow your bliss? I would love to follow my bliss. Yeah. problem is when I follow my bliss, I end up with ice cream and uh, other stuff that, you know, isn't really good for me. Yeah, I, I'm not a big follow your bliss guy either. Apologies to Joseph Campbell. But perhaps we should begin with prayer. That would be awesome. Why don't you do it? The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for the opportunity once again to discuss something that is on our minds. We give you thanks for our minds and for the opportunity to try and think about the way that your word impacts our lives and the lives of those whom we serve as pastors. As we try to wrap our minds around this whole question of what it means to advise someone and to take advice from someone, we pray that we will take the advice of your Holy Spirit, who broods over us always, and who provides us with your wisdom, if we can but get ourselves out of the way enough to hear that advice and take it. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hey, do you have another word for advice? Uh, I don't know. Uh, Complaining. <laughs> well, that might be a good one, but that, uh, well, it shouldn't be. I, I don't have another word, but I, you know, sometimes we can, you know, look at another word to help us understand, you know, what the premise of that is. And I think, if I think about the word advice, maybe somebody you would give somebody counsel. Counsel, yes. Or you know, do, do you have some wisdom to give? You know, I, I have a friend who I, I think I've quoted who says, you know, you can learn from the school of wisdom. Or you can learn from the school of hard knocks, you know, experience, a, 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 a experience right. this, this hard knocks, you know, and, and getting, you know, making mistakes. But today, you know, maybe we think about what it means to, to learn from somebody else. Uh, so when you're facing a decision, when you're facing a crisis, when you, you know, just uh, need some extra help. Uh, often when I think about people who come to the pastor for advice, mm -hmm. it's getting to be fewer and fewer. I'll be honest. It's get, not because I don't give wonderful advice. I give wonderful advice. But pastoral counseling, is that a thing anymore? Yeah, it's, it seems, in, in my experience too, it's, it's kind of less and less. Um, and I, I, I guess I, I don't know that that's all bad. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, because... because wait, I, wait a minute. Well, no, here. quite frankly, uh, uh, hmm. uh, of the people who have come to me and you know in my years in ministry for for advice for counseling yeah um some of them needed to be referred to a real professional oh absolutely and, and i don't yeah. mean by pastors you're not a real professional paul not a real mental health professional oh. i guess that's what i mean it's where yeah. when you you know you're talking with someone and 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 as the conversation goes on you start to to twig to the idea that there's some real mental illness here Okay. Uh, and that's and that for me is something that's beyond my ken, beyond my ability to, you know, to offer whatever wisdom I have gleaned from the scriptures and my own experience and whatever. How, how are um, you at with nutrition? So I, do you give good advice about nutrition? nutrition? Obviously not. What, what about auto maintenance? Are you good at auto maintenance? No, I'm I'm no. a layman in all those areas too, oh. just the same way as with mental health. 
So some people, you know, you say you, you really need to see someone who's kind of a, a, a specialist in these areas, or or if it's a if it's a for instance a couple that's coming, you know, for sure. advice, you can give a certain a certain amount of advice. But if they really need somebody who's you know trained in like marriage and family therapy, you're not so trained in marriage. Come on, how many years have you been married? I'm trained in marriage, but I'm not trained in. <laughs> Not trained in family ah, I therapy. see her wife has trained you in marriage. I she see this. She, she has, has molded you, she but has, not for well, every woman, just for... Yeah, thank you, Sarah. Hang with us, Sarah. She is one of our biggest fans and, and viewers, and so we don't want to offend Sarah, but... Don't unsubscribe. <laughs> <laughs> but, but today, as you think about what what does a pastor have to give advice well, the, on the, the, the other kind, though, I, I wanted to mention oh, these, the these sorts of things, too. The people that have come to me and they kind of lay out a situation and it becomes very clear that they've actually made up their minds. Hmm. And what they want is, you know, is 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 the my my blessing or, or the church's blessing. Ooh, that, I like that. that. This is yes, what what you've already decided on is in fact the right move. And I guess I'm I'm always kind of loath to give that advice. I <laughs> <laughs> it's, it, it's the contrarian in me. I, I have a tendency to want to say, well, did you think about maybe, you know, doing this another way? Did you, you know, try to consider it this way? And the and in the situations that I'm talking about, the answer is always, I didn't want that kind of advice. I, this, this is not what I came to hear. Mm. I came to hear you say what a great idea this is and how I should, you know, go full steam ahead. Well, I, I like that. You know, I've, I've talked to a lot of people in recovery and one of the things they say is if you ever get a good idea run it by another person and if they say it's a good idea too <laughs> then you can move forward so this idea that sometimes the big ideas I have in my head might not be the greatest you know uh, even some advice maybe you should sleep on it you know that's some good it's, advice sometimes too and see advice. how you feel Almost about it in the morning absolutely. you know and so when I just think about you know to advise was the word you know you used earlier um, to, to not necessarily instruct, but help somebody think through. Mm -hmm. and, and I really like what you did. When I think about pastoral counseling, you, you know, not making the decision for the person, not telling them what they should do, but helping them in a process right. of, is it a process of decision making? Is it a process coming to understand what their feelings are around this? Is it, you know, some things have a resolution and sometimes there is a clear direction. But often in pastoral counseling, when I think about, you know, advice or advising somebody, you know, often it's not a prescribed thing other than, what is the pastor always going to say? Pray. Pray about yeah, it. Yeah, you should pray about it. Pray you know, about it. Pray about it. About it. Always, That's it. You know? Just like <laughs> sleep on is almost always good advice. Pray about it is <laughs> always good advice. But <laughs> right. you, 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 you laid out a, an important distinction there, I think, between advising and instructing is mm. one thing that I try not to do Ooh, perhaps well, because I resent it so much <laughs> when other people do it to me <laughs> is when somebody someone you know lays out a situation and says I you know I'm troubled about this I'm trying to think this through and you know, and, and then and the other person comes in and says okay well let me just give you the answer but let, let, let me just tell you you know here's here's the right way to think about this here's the answer uh, you know, go in peace. Uh, you know, you can thank me later for solving. Why your would problem. you hate that? That would be fantastic if someone could deal with all your challenges and problems and just say, "This is the right thing." I guess for me, it's uh, I'm terrible at math. You know, there's there's the path of light and the path of darkness. There's you know the words, and that's me. And then there's the math, and that's my elder son. He's great with all this stuff. I'm terrible with it. But one of the things that that he knows as a math guy is that you have to show your work. If you don't, if you don't, if you don't show your work, mm -hmm. then the fact that you got the right answer it might just be some random thing, you know. If you, but if you show your work, then we know how you got there, and that that is in fact the right answer. And I think that if somebody just instructs me mm -hmm. and says, "Okay, so here's the answer." then I'm not getting the opportunity to, to go through the path from where I am now in a quandary to where I want to be, which is, you know, with the situation resolved, and now I'm moving forward. I, now, I wait a minute, though. Like but if right it's thing. the right 
answer. Can you think of any Bible stories where people come and do that? Bible stories. Yeah, can you think of any? It just exactly when you were talking about it, the the, the interaction I was thinking about is you know um, when we get to. Uh, uh, Job and his three buddies who show up. <laughs> yeah. his and that's comforting. exactly what they his do. Comforting. You know, they come and sit down and say, Job, we know what's wrong with you. We know what's <laughs> happening. We know what's wrong. Just listen to us and your life will get better. Yeah. Do, you know, you've done something. You, you know, if you would just repent, if you would just admit your mistakes, if you would just come clean, yeah. then things could could right. get here's, better. But since you won't do that, now, right. and Job says, no. But even my favorite is, you, you know, when I was going through a difficult time in my life, uh, you know, somebody reminded me of the story of Job and his three counselors come, and for seven days they sit in silence. Yes. That sometimes when somebody comes to you, even looking for help, uh, maybe they're looking for an answer. Um, you know, what, uh, what they begin with is seven days of not talking. Wow. And... I think that's probably the greatest wisdom right? <laughs> in the book of Job right. until God starts talking in right. chapter yeah. thirty-eight. And, then and not everybody may know that story off, uh, off off the heart, but you know, as we think about you know our lives and and maybe people who have given you good advice, you know, take your vitamins, brush your teeth, get eight hours of sleep. You know, this is you, this, you'll be better. You know, deal with the stress in your life. As a pastor, you, you know, we do want to help people live good and happy lives you know right. we do want to direct people you know if you're hungry if you're thirsty you know let us show you where you can find some nourishment and something that's going to sustain you for your spiritual right. journey yeah, you know this idea that that we have something that that other people want but what i hear you saying too is well i serve it to me in a way that you know or help me go through this process rather than just fast forward to the end you know, I have a process, and I need to go through that to get there. And if you just come and try and input your answers into my life, it may not fit quite as comfortably for me as it does for you. So help me on that. And, and when we share, often when I think about the advice uh, I give, I, I try not to tell people you should do this and this and this. There have been times I have done that, I, I'll be honest. But often it's... I'll share what has helped me. Right. And I'll try and share it, not in a way that says, you should do this, but this is what I've done. You mm -hmm. know, this is what I've found helpful. This is, you know, the process that I went through. And uh, often the, the hard answer is, it's going to take some time. You know, when I think about some right. advice That's I've right. given, somebody once told me the good news and the bad news. Do you know that? The good news and the bad news. The good news is it does get better bad news is it does take time you know that can be you know that can not be something you want to hear but to say you're gonna have to go through this there's no end run around it you're, you're gonna have to do the work and you're right there are some times when of course a, a person comes in and they're and and the 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 what they need to do at least at, at the threshold, you know, the first kinds of things that they need to do yeah. are actually fairly simple, but they're just, they're, they're so, they're, you know, they're, they're, their vision is so clouded by the fact that, that, that this situation is so troubling that sometimes it is helpful to it just, you know, you need to call that guy and find out, yeah. you know, X, what, you know, some, so, you know, some, some piece of information that's needed, you know, to move forward. Yeah. But generally, when people come to the pastor, yeah. it's you know as you're saying they're 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 looking there's they're, they want to they think there's a spiritual angle on this problem, hmm. and and sometimes it's it strictly is a, a spiritual problem. I mean, it's someone who, uh, for instance, is having difficulty praying that they never had before, or yeah. you know, some some such thing as that. And there it is. I think that we actually do have something that we can bring to bear. Uh, whether it's our own experience, as it often is, I think, as you were saying, or whether it's something, uh, you know, that, that we've gleaned uh, from the scriptures or from, you know, from our years of studying various things, uh, or, or just, just having, you know, been a parish pastor for, for, for many years, you do run into similar kinds of situations. And, and I think that it's, it's on those, those spiritual dimensions that we really are able to help, but of course we recognize on the deeper, more theological level 
but all we're really doing is getting out of the way so that the Holy Spirit can help, right? Well, I, I like that, and you know, even that famous prayer, Lord, make me a, a channel or a conduit or an instrument of your peace, you know, Lord, somehow work through me to be able to help other people, uh, that we do have a message and that we can care and support and, and show people what has helped us. Ultimately, they're going to have to take that and apply it to their life, but but sometimes when, when there is this idea of advisory, you know, and, and the idea that what somebody needs is some direction, mm -hmm. you know, even the, the idea that in the old days people were lost. Mm -hmm. and, and what does that mean spiritually, you know, to not have purpose, to not have meaning, to not have direction. Um, today, I think, you know, it's, it's interesting. I, I know in my sermons, and I hope I don't give too much advice, but I, I do make suggestions uh, at times, and I think that's one of the things I've learned. Like you said, the, the attitude, the, the, the impression you give somebody, you know, that I've got it all figured out, and here's what, you, you know, the one thing missing in your life, you know, and if you just do this, everything else will come together. I, I think as pastors, and as... I don't take that well, <laughs> even if I think it might be true. I still don't take it well. Well, we'll still work with you anyway, <laughs> Paul. You know, I, I, we'll, we'll, good luck. We'll, we'll give them some advice later. But uh, you know, having good advisors. You know, I, I think you know even maybe about your previous career in the law. I, I, I like the idea that lawyers are called advocates well, and counselors. Sir, we I think that idea that you need you, you go through a time where you need some counsel. You need some uh, somebody to you know uh, be an advocate. For you, and, our and, firm called ourselves attorneys right. and counselors at law. Yeah, and I, I a lot think of times for me, you need to advocate and and move forward and and you know defend yeah. or or move against somebody else, but a lot of times it's a matter of counseling. It's what's what really is the right thing to do here? Is this a thing where sh you should litigate, mm -hmm. or is it a thing where you should negotiate? Ooh. The counseling is really a piece of Oh, that I like well. that. Should you litigate or should you negotiate? Oh, that's fantastic. And I think as pastors, it would be nice if we had some cute phrases like that. You know, what you need is, you know, this or this. And and as pastors, sometimes we come and, and every day is different. And somebody will come in to talk about something and, man, it really is something you're unprepared for. Right. Um, and, and sometimes, you know, people really are facing a crisis. Um, but the idea that, you know, when we advise people, uh, you know, what is it we have to give? You know, that care, compassion, and, you know, that their life matters. You know, that what they're going through. And, and to take it seriously and take some time to sit down and, and spend time with people. Uh, to be there uh, with them and to walk beside people. As I, I think, think that's, where the, that's where the wisdom emerges. It, it can. And, it, you know, for me, I, I have some friends who really like to trust their intuition. And they really like to say, well, oh, I'm really getting this feeling or this sense, uh, you know, of what you need. And, you know, I even was talking to somebody who, who shared one time that his massage therapist, you know, was really in tune and would be massaging him and say, how is your relationship with your wife? And he would say, it's not good. You're right. And, and, and he just said, oh, she was this, just very this intuitive. This muscle right here. Yeah. Is really, so, yeah. you know, I, I don't know what I truly think. Think it's a about holistic it. approach. Oh, it's very interesting. And I have friends who, you know, they don't call it massage, they call it body work. But we need to, that's a whole other issue, uh, or in a whole other episode. Yeah, one of my I good guess. friends from the Bay Area, he did body work, not massage, because massage, that gives the wrong connotation. But to help somebody. And, and as we think about, you know, what helps people, you know, what is it, you know, that people are looking for from the church? So what I guess is it we're that doing people soul need? work then. Ooh, we're doing body work. Well, or must be inner soul work. work. You know, inner healing is what a lot of people are talking about, you know, today. And so, a hidden inwardness. Oh, like yeah. this could be good. And so, you know, there is the, the external world that I have to navigate, but there's this internal world. And ultimately, you know, what is spirituality is the word everybody wants to use today. And, and who do you go for being a spiritual coach? Who do you go to for advice for your spiritual practices, Paul? I, I don't want. I was giving him a chance to talk about the Society of, of the Holy Trinity, and he was cringing. See, I was giving him an opportunity to say we should have some discipline and some order and some spiritual practice that leads to 
health. I'll, and, I'll let you have a copy of the rule. Oh, that would never. Yeah, would never. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, so. This is then man, Jesus. So don't I, preach what you won't practice. <laughs> I won't. Yeah, no, no. Uh, it's there, there are, yeah. in fact, spiritual practices, spiritual right. disciplines. And, and as Lutherans, of course, we maintain evangelical freedom about all those things. Thank if it, goodness. If it helps you, then that's good. If it doesn't help you, then just leave it alone. Yes. Right? I'm going to leave no sal alone. No salvation in any of it. That's right. Jesus alone. Christ alone. And and that idea, though, that, that we might have spiritual muscles and that, that maybe when we face decisions, the reason we're not good at it or we need some counsel is we need some support. Mm -hmm. We need some wisdom. We need somebody who's been down the path a little further. And ultimately... You know, we would say Jesus is the ultimate counselor. Uh, Jesus promises, you know, us to receive another advocate, you know, that, that the Holy Spirit is going to come and is going to guide us into all truth is what it says in By John. reminding us of everything oh, Jesus told us already. That's a really good point. And so when we think about, you know, our lives and think about the work of the Spirit, you know, what is God doing? He hasn't left us abandoned. He is here with us and he is helping us through uh, the ups and downs of life. And, and sometimes and, and he even gives us an advisor. Gosh, that is good. That is really good. <laughs> so we're grateful. Thank you for uh, joining us on another episode of What is the Premise? God Thank bless. you. Bye.